What's going on guys? It is Tazbot here, back again with another Minecraft Monday video for you guys. So we're gonna be jumping back into our single player world. And I wanted to talk to I want to talk about something today, guys. So um the I'm sure a lot of you know since you know you're on YouTube that there is a uh, no there is a YouTube um ad boycott going on and a lot of YouTubers are not making money. Um, and a lot of them are upset about that. Um, understandably so. It's their living. Um, and, you know, you can't be mad at someone for not making the living that they used to doing the exact same thing. But, um, in my opinion, I come at it from a completely separate direction. Um, I currently work a 9-to-5 job and do YouTube for fun. Um, so keep that in mind with what I'm saying and all that um, but personally here's how I view it YouTube is a contract job um, that's what it's listed as that's how all these people that are complaining that's how they got paid for all the years they've been doing YouTube so you never know when a contract job is going to end when it's what's going to happen that's the reason it's contract um, if it was a steady, regular job, it would be different. There would be a lot of different things going on with it. You wouldn't get paid as much, that sort of stuff, because there's a different perks with a regular full-time job. And I know a lot of people on YouTube, especially the people that watch YouTube, are young, and they don't understand uh, the difference. But I work a full-time job. I do YouTube because I enjoy the... I enjoy the con... I enjoy making content. It's a creative outlet for me. Um, like I said, I work a 9 to 5. I don't get to be that creative there. Um, so it's a creative outlet. It's fun. I get to play video games. It gives me a reason to play video games. It, it, it makes me schedule time for what I consider to be more leisurely activities like gaming, like, um, you know, making videos, that sort of stuff. Um, and I know not everyone feels like that's leisure time, but when you work a nine to five like I don't know I consider it leisure time so that's why I make videos and I enjoy it it's fun to me um, I think all these people that are complaining about the ad boycott while I get it I think they forgot that that I mean if you're not doing what you love then why are you doing it like do I love my nine to five job no but I'm also not planning on being there forever. So I mean, if you were planning on doing YouTube forever, there's a lot of financial thing. There's a lot of financial steps you should have taken. Um, I don't know. There, I guess what I'm saying is they don't get much sympathy from me at this at this juncture. Um, from what I've seen, yeah, ad revenue's down. It's not gone um, forever. Like you know, there's just I don't know. There's there's this golden age of YouTube where people made a lot of money. And I think now that we're out of that and it's becoming more of a regulated income source and pe more people are getting involved, there's a lot more, while there's more money going around, it's being distributed more is what I think a lot of people don't realize. Um, there's more creators than ever. And, you know, I'm one of them. I'm fairly new to this YouTube game. Um, but uh, like I said, I don't do it for money. I think if I was doing it for money, I would have quit the day after I started because there's not, there's A, there's no guaranteed money at all in YouTube. Any creator that um, is telling you like, oh, well, I thought I was going to make this much. That's a number they pulled out of their head. There's no guaranteed money. Even when you're a regular contractor, there's no guaranteed money. So I don't know why freelance contractors would expect guaranteed money from something you know it's just not realistic for how the real world works and I know a lot of these creators are very young and they don't understand that sort of stuff um, that's where they really need someone on their side like a manager business manager financial manager someone that can sort of explain to them how some of this stuff happens because Anyone who got into this and thought they were going to make a fortune forever and they were going to make, you know, millions of dollars in AdSense for the rest of their lives, they're going to be disappointed because that's not how, that's not realistic. 
That's not realistic for entertainment. That's not realistic for contract work. That's not realistic for any part of what they're doing. So I guess I just don't understand where these expectations really came from. Hold on. Let me kill these guys real quick. They're frustrating me. What the heck? How many zombies are down here? We're going to get out of the water. But I, I guess I just don't understand where they got these ideas from unless it was their own head. Because, I mean, what TV show do you know that's on forever, you know? Like, those actors are eventually not going to have a job, so I don't know where they got the idea that they were going to be forever making YouTube and making money and without having to do anything else, you know? That's, that's what drives me nuts, I guess, is that there's no TV shows that are on forever. Why would they think this genre of entertainment is any different? Yeah, they're more in control of their future, but if they didn't build a future and they didn't do anything to secure themselves financially, that's on them. Um, you know, that's on them and possibly the people around them if they're underage. But if they're 18, they're adults, man. Like, put on your uh, big boy pants and go. Like, you have you can't just blame other people for you not planning when once you're past 18. If if there's like some 16 year olds or 13 year olds and they're like, oh, I didn't plan and no one helped me, then you know I could get their case. Um, but even then, like if you're if you have a steady income, a full time what you consider a full time job, and you're not doing anything to be financially stable if that job were to go away building you know building uh not what am i saying building like skills so that you can get another job in the industry or something like no one depends on one on one employer to get them through the rest of their lives that's not how it works like you may have to change jobs what you do is you go to employers to learn skills and get a paycheck so if you're learning skills and getting a paycheck then they're fulfilling their end of their the agreement. But, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, no one's obligated to employ you forever, especially in a freelance position. So, I mean, these YouTubers are complaining, but to me, YouTube was never started as a big money-making endeavor. It's not like some get-rich-quick scheme website. That's not how it was started. It was started for people to make videos that they love and what they enjoy doing, a creative outlet, and just take it from there and have fun. And, you know, that's what I do with it. And I don't understand, I guess, where these people that came in and got rich quick, I don't understand why they're complaining at this point. Like, yeah, money is down. And yeah, it sucks when you're a creator. But, you know, if you're saying, oh, I've got bills, I've got this and that and the other thing, get a job, like do something else. Like you're telling me with the skills you've built being a YouTuber, you can find no other source of revenue working on a film crew, working as an editor, doing all this stuff. These are all skills that in and I'm assuming they're in L.A. or whatever, you know, if they're doing all this from the middle of nowhere in, you know, Montana yeah, it may be rough applying these skills to a new job, but at the same time, rough does not mean impossible. So they may have to work harder, but if it's doing what you want to do, you work harder for that sort of stuff. That's that's life, you know? You work harder to get the job that you want to have, not the job that... Like, anyone can work at McDonald's. You work harder to get the job you want to have instead of the job that you have to have. So that doesn't change no matter who you are, no matter what career field you are in. No one, no job that anyone can have is what you want. So if you want to work and you want to advance and you want to do what you love, you have to work hard. So I don't, I guess, to me, these guys are complaining. And some of the people I've seen complaining are people that are millionaires because of YouTube. And they're complaining about ad revenue. Like you don't need that revenue anymore you haven't needed it in years so i just don't and if you still need it then you're living a lifestyle that's not financially responsible and that's on you 
So, I mean, this has been a bit of a rant, I guess, but I've just seen so many people talking about it, and I don't understand where it's coming from. You know, like, if YouTube granted a living to you for so many years or whatever, you should be thankful for that, and I don't get why so many people are bitter that, you know, they had to change. YouTube operates at a deficit, if if I understand this right, because I've read some articles on YouTube, obviously. I'm on the platform. It interests me. Online video, new media. It all is very interesting to me um, from a creative standpoint um, and a business standpoint, too. I am in, uh, you know, corporate America, so it interests me from a business standpoint. So I was uh, looking into, you know, YouTube and how it functions, how it operates, from what I understand, YouTube op- YouTube operates at a deficit. So, if a portion of a company the size of Google is operating at a deficit, and then all of a sudden the f- little bit of income they do have, which doesn't pay off, you know, the amount of money they need to run the site, that little bit of money is becoming less because of advertisers not wanting to be on the site anymore for one reason or another. They have to make changes, you know, like that's sustainability for the long term of YouTube and, you know, the other people that are employed at Google to it's a smart business decision. Like that's a decision that anyone would make. Like if someone came to you and said, hey, so you're operating at a deficit, you can either, you know, tell the rowdy teenagers to leave not leave, tell the rowdy teenagers they have to, you know, contribute more and be less rowdy, or, you know, we're going to kick your whole family out. You know, it's an obvious decision. Like, I don't get so many people being upset by it. And, like, I don't blame the advertisers. Their ads were supposedly showing up along stuff that, you know, isn't advertiser-friendly. And I'll be honest, I don't get what that term advertiser-friendly means. I think everything has a market. Um, if nothing else, YouTube has proven that everything has a market and I never saw ads where I don't think people would want them, uh, like companies would want them, but I guess it happened because why else would they complain? You know, they're not going to complain just for no reason. They, they saw something they didn't like and they had to do what they had to do, but I don't know. I guess I just I get where advertisers are coming from if they saw what you know the New York Times claimed they saw. Do I believe the New York Times? No. They have it out for new media. They're old media. Old media's had it out for new media forever. Um so no, I don't believe the New York Times in what they posted. Um but it's kind of a shame how uh all of it went down, how it was so vague and unclear and fast, how everything happened is a shame. Um, because it does, it makes being a creator on the website very hard, especially if you're hoping to get paid. I mean, I don't ever expect to make a dime from YouTube in all honesty. Um, yes, I am partner. Yes, I do post ads on my videos, but I don't make income from that. If you guys look up sort of how it works, you know, you have to have so many lifetime views before you can get paid. You have to have so many, you have to make so much money on your content before you can get paid. And there's so many things like that, that I'm like, I don't ever expect to get paid actually from YouTube. So it's not a big deal to me. And I'll be the first to say, this is a, this is a mute, this is a moot point for me. It's, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm never planning on making money on YouTube. I'm never planning on YouTube being my primary source of income. If it happened, would I be complaining? Absolutely not, because I love making videos. It's fun to me. Um, It's sort of what I used to do um, before I got into IT. I used to make videos back when I was in college. I I edited uh, like, um, what is it, like high school club videos. So it's fun for me. I enjoy doing it. It's stress relief, but I don't ever expect it to be a form of income. If one day it becomes a form of income, great. If one day it becomes my primary source of income, I've hit the jackpot. Like, I basically have won the lottery at that point, in my mind. So, I mean, would I be complaining then if I had advertised, if I had, like, 
you know, my pay cut because of advertiser blocks? No, because I'm never going to leave where I'm in a situation where I could, you know, put myself where I can't pay my bills. I would never be in that situation. I would never leave my current job for a situation like that. And that's like, um, I think, uh, Lol Ray Ray, Law Renee, something like that. She commented on this recently, mostly about Twitch, really. Um, but I think it's relevant to YouTube as well. Don't quit your current job until you have a lot of savings and you can, uh, you know, afford to live for a while without an income to become a YouTuber or a Twitch streamer. You can do it while you're working. Many of the people who you love on YouTube and uh, Twitch and all that did started their whole career while they were at another career. Um, like, I'm doing it now. I, well, I'm not starting a career. I'm just, I record videos and everything, um, you know, and I still work 40 hours a week. So it is doable. Um, people just have to, you know, if you really want it, you got to hustle. And if you're not willing to do that, then maybe you shouldn't be in the space in the first place. And, um, I mean, it's rough to say that, but, and you know, if you're 16, don't think of this as like a career path. It's not a career path. It's a dream job. If you like get super lucky, it would be like, you know, to me, it's the equivalent of the old school. I want to be a rock star. Like, yeah, if that happens, you got super lucky congrats but maybe you should bank on something like and have a backup plan and not just no video games and that's it and you're not willing to compromise on that because you may find yourself in situations where you're not happy um because you know what if one day you turn around and youtube and twitch isn't the dream that you thought it was you know you've committed everything to it you don't have a way out so i guess the moral of the story is always 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 have a contingency if you don't have a contingency plan you're doing yourself a disservice and you're doing anyone who you know could depend on you one day whether it be a spouse a significant other a uh, child anything like that if you want any of that like you need to have contingency plans for everything that you do because that stuff like having, you know, a kid, having a spouse, a significant other, that all costs money in the real world, especially kids. Um, you know, a spouse or significant other can pull their own weight and everything like that, but kids can't. So if you like, I don't know, just to me, if you ever want anyone to rely on you in life, you need to have backup plans and you need to be able to execute on them. Like saying, oh, I want to be a rock. Oh, I want to be a rock star with my backup plan of being an actor. Um, that's not a backup plan. That's, you know, shooting for the stars twice over. And while, you know, I fully support everyone can do whatever they want to do. Um, just a little bit of, um, practicality with it is going to go a long way. Like a little bit of, hey, maybe there's a, maybe there's a better option for me at this point. Um, like as far as like college and everything like that, that would really help you out a lot in the long run. So I don't know. That's just my advice from a random dude who does this sometimes for fun. Um, I think that everyone should have some sort of contingency for what they're doing and be able to then execute to get to that contingency and still be able to have a life that, you know, doesn't revolve around a platform that you have no control over. I think, um, I'm not going to lie, I'm a big Philip DeFranco fan, and I think he said it probably best in that, you know, his plan is always for YouTube to fail. And so far, it's been like a wonderful disaster that it hasn't failed. And he's, you know, been very successful, made a good living off of it for his life. So, I mean, there are place, there are guys like that, 
But for every guy like Philip DeFranco, there's like other guys out there that they tried everything and it didn't work. And there's no rhyme or reason to it other than it just didn't work. So my advice is A, always diversify and B, have contingency plans that you can execute on if you ever have that situation come up where, you know, this is the dream, but sometimes the dream doesn't work out the way you want it to. So that's my uh, thoughts on the whole YouTube boycott. I know people had asked me, so I figured I would share um, what my thoughts were on it. Um, any creators boycotting YouTube, I think, are not um, looking at the big picture. The big picture is truly that they didn't have a choice. They had advertisers pulling money. When there's that many advertisers pulling money, you as a company have to make decisions. And they're not always ones you want to make, but they are often ones you have to make. Um, and in business, there's a lot of, I don't want to do this, but I have to do this. So... That'll do it for today's episode. It was a bit of a rant. Um, I just wanted to kind of get that off my chest about YouTube because I've seen a lot about it lately and it's been kind of bothering me because people don't seem to realize this is a dream job, not a guarantee. So remember going into anything that you need to have backups and be ready for the day that everything falls out from underneath you because it does happen in life. That's how it works. But yeah, I hope you guys liked it. If you liked the video, click like. If you want to see more like ranty subjects about this that are kind of more adult, I guess, go ahead and let me know down in the comments down below. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Like I said, I don't plan on making money from this or anything, but I would like to get a, uh, a channel like URL. That would be kind of convenient, mostly for me linking it because it's been about to link to people right now because it's got like 20 letters at the end of it. But yeah, so please like the video, subscribe. If uh, you want to play with me on Minecraft, let me know what you want to play, like mini games wise, stuff like that. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this episode of Minecraft Mondays, please click or tap on the left hand side. It'll bring you up to a playlist of all the episodes I've done so far. If you want to subscribe to my channel, please click or tap on the right hand side and you'll get notifications whenever I post a new video.